Ryan Jameson. I'm Jonathan Hill, and we're grad students at the University of Utah. I'm currently taking Dr. Project's fluids class. We're here today to talk about how this experiment works. Uh, our motivation for exploring the Bernoulli ball principle is mainly to gain a better understanding of the Bernoulli principles um, that affect the flow around a cylinder. Um, as you can see, to understand how the fluid interacts with the ball and keeps the ball in place by using the Bernoulli uh, equation. Also, we expect to find the critical angle at which the ball uh, will no longer be supported by the leaf blower. Now, in order to understand the fluid flow phenomenon that's occurring between the ball and the leaf blower, let's consider a 2D cylinder um, with the flow going around the cylinder. As seen in this little diagram, we have the blower and the ball. Now as the fluid flow, as the air moves towards the ball and wraps around the ball, you'll notice by the streamlines that the flow goes around the ball. Now, in order to understand this, uh, this fluid flow phenomenon, Euler was able, um, came up with the S and N equations, and Euler's S and N equations are the fluid flow, or, um, is analyzing the flow for along a streamline and normal to the streamline. Now after deriving the equations, we can find that the Euler S equation is as given is here, which is the time, time derivative of the velocity and the derivative of the velocity over the streamline is equal to the pressure differential. And for the Euler N equation, it's the change in theta times the velocity plus the velocity squared over the radius of the curvature is equal to the pressure differential in the N direction. Now, if we apply some simplifying back, um, assumption to this, namely one that the flow is steady, Two, we can assume that this is in viscous flow, in, which means that the viscous forces are a lot are much smaller than the inertial forces. And lastly, we can assume this is incompressible flow. Now, if we make those assumptions and apply them to these two apply them to this equation, the Euler S equation, what do we get in the end? We get the Bernoulli equation, which is simply the velocity squared divided by two plus the pressure divided by the density is equal to a constant. Yeah, the Bernoulli's equation here, um, which is a little constant. Uh, we'll apply the, the Bernoulli's principle here in the flow stream, in the airstream, I mean, and also here in the ambient conditions. Um, since the velocity is uh, a lot higher here in the airstream, um, the corresponding pressure must be much lower. And it's this higher velocity and lower pressure region here which keeps the ball centered in the airstream. Um, the other thing is, um, looking at the conservation of momentum, um, we look at the gravity, gravity um, force of the ball, and the thrust of the air leaving the blower. And um, the thrust of the air leaving the blower is actually higher than the force, the gravitational force of the ball, which allows the ball to stay elevated by the airstream from the blower. Now, we can use the Bernoulli's equation to analyze the flow when the lead blower is vertical, such as this. potential flow theory. Now, potential flow theory is a method of using what are known as sources and sinks of vorticity to analyze how, uh, how air will flow around an object such as the sphere. Now, to analyze that, um, we are able to determine the velocities um, in, in all corresponding directions, and then we were eventually able to use the source and sinks to determine the pressure distribution along the surface of the sphere. Now for the pressure coefficient along the surface of the sphere, it will look like something like this. So if you say the x-axis and the y-axis, 
Now the x-axis is from 0 to 180 degrees along the top of the sphere. And the y-axis y -axis is your coefficient of pressure from approximately 1 to about negative 4 for just general conditions. Now what happens with the coefficient of pressure, or you could think of the pressure along the top of the sphere, it would go something like this. As you can see, when the flow hits the leading edge of the sphere, the pressure is higher, but as it goes, as it travels over the sphere, the pressure will drop, creating a lower pressure region, and the pressure will continue to rise as it goes over the other side of the sphere. Now, you can consider the, the potential flow theory with and, without, with, with and without circulation. If you consider it, this case is without circulation. If you consider it with circulation, you'll get a similar pressure pro profile, but the, the magnitude will be different. For the, re the, re the circulation case, it would be as such. In this case, you can see the profile is basically the same, but the lower pressure region becomes larger. Um, the magnitude increases, and hence you'll have a, a larger pressure gradient. In other words, you can create more lift. And it's by this lift generation that the ball floats. As Ryan said, uh, the ball will float, and um, in order to achieve this, we'll be using ball hair, leaf blower, and to uh, measure the critical angle, as we mentioned before, we will rotate the base of the blower, and using this protractor, we'll be able to determine the angle um, at which the ball will fall off into the ground. roughly 30 degrees, 30-35 degrees. Uh, one interesting phenomenon to note is that if the ball is circulating while in the airstream, um, the angle that can be achieved uh, with the ground is actually quite a bit smaller as if, and compared to the case when it is not actually circulating. Now while performing our experiment, um, in this one we, we displayed right here, and in other ones we did, uh, you could say behind the scenes, um, you know, there's, we notice there's several areas of uncertainty and, I hate to say it, experimental error. One area of uncertainty that we, we came across when we were doing some calculations, um, we didn't have much data for the leaf blower, and so we used data provided by the vendor. Now, this data provided by the vendor, um, we weren't able to verify the data, and so we, we were using the velocity and the volumetric flow rate of the, air, of the leaf blower. So those are some areas of uncertainty. Also, um, when we were using the, in performing these calculations, we were assuming the ball would be perfectly round. Now this ball is a piece of foam and so, and it has dimples in it. That will change the calculations from what we did, though not drastically. Also in our experimental, er um, experimental um, errors that we found is, as you can see, our, our protractor is a rough protractor. Um, just it basically extrapolated from uh, a small plastic protractor. Also, um, this, you know, when we had the steadiness of the blower, and um, lastly, we noticed in the pipe here there was some small leaks of air, so that will change the amount of air coming from the blower to not match what the, what the vendor was advertising. Lastly, who knows, with ambient conditions and different airflow with the air conditioning in the room, etc., that will have in the end, different effects on the keeping the ball in float. For Ryan and me, I'd like to thank you for your time. And if you'd like to know any more, we suggest you go to your local library or take uh, take right at like the rest of us. Yeah. Bye. Bye.